circumstances. And today's play was recorded in the 1950s and is set in Italy. We present Howard Marion Crawford and Brian Wilde in The New Catechum, adapted for radio from a short story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The New Catechum. Ah, oh, Bentley's there. Got my message. Come along in. Oh, thank, thank you, Kennedy. Hang your head up. Oh, what's in your bag? Oh, a few odd things I thought might interest you. Right, eh? Bring him to the study. But you know my motto, pleasure before business, let's have a drink first. <laughs> all, all right, thank you. So long as you don't expect me to keep pace with you. <laughs> Come along in. Yeah. Oh, warm tonight, isn't it? Well, it's soft and pretty warm at this time of the year in Rome. I like it, anyway. Do you mind if I open a window? Oh, that's the idea. You open a window and I'll open a bottle. It's fair division of labor. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you brute. <laughs> have, you, have you seen the continental edition of the Courier? No. But it's that I want to see you about. No, I'm afraid I've been working all day in my room. No. Oh. Well, uh, we've got something to celebrate. Oh, Salute. Cheers. C- cigarette? Yeah. Oh, no, of course you don't. Well, what do you mean? We've got something to celebrate. Now, now, you listen to this, my lad. Uh, where is it now? It's in the gossip. Uh, I, here, here we are. I'm told the two young Englishmen in Rome are shedding new light on an old subject. Archaeology, it seems, isn't the exclusive province of old gentlemen with long beards and short sight. <laughs> I like that bit. <laughs> and, um, oh, yes. Now listen to this, Len. Edmund Kennedy's recent daring reconstructions of the Baths of Caracalla has excited admiration and controversy. Uh-huh. I hear that savants are heading for Rome to see the wonderfully imaginative model he has made. The ingenuity he has displayed may well give fresh impetus to the science of antiquities. Uh, another Englishman in Rome, Charles Benchley, is working on the theory that there are fresh discoveries to be made under the foundations of the Eternal City. It is generally agreed that the ancient catacombs, the underground cemeteries in which the early Christians buried their dead, have long since yielded up their last secret. But Benchley, I hear, is stubbornly pursuing his idea that there are fresh underworlds to be conquered. So far, without result. Now, where are you going? Well, I, well I, I, I think it's pretty cheap stuff. I, <laughs> it, it was quite inaccurate. It's full of feeble little cracks and cliches. I, I mean to say, the, the eternal city, yeah. new light on an old subject. Oh, this is smart alec journalism. Oh, oh, not that I'm belittling the work you've done, only... Only what? Well, I think that this sort of thing only cheapens our work. I wonder where the paper got hold of this stuff. I thought perhaps you might have inspired it. I? Good heavens, no. Oh, no, I I, I assure you, Kennedy, I'd never dream of such a thing. No, I believe that our, our sort of work should be done almost by stealth until we are ready ourselves to publish results. Oh, I don't know. A little bit of publicity never did anyone any harm. Besides, it's expected nowadays. <laughs> I'm a brilliant young man, eventually, and my, oh, what was it? Uh, my ingenuity and imagination have given fresh impetus to interest in archaeology. <laughs> well, damn it, man, why should film stars get all the limelight? Aren't we doing work of lasting value? By unraveling the past, we forecast the future. No, no, here's two publics a day. <laughs> oh, perhaps you're right. Uh, I expect I'm too diffident. Yes, of course you are. Uh, if you're not careful, you're going to develop into one of those old men with long beards and short sight <laughs> who practically live at the British Museum. <laughs> well, certainly I sometimes wonder how long I shall stick it in Rome. Oh, to be in England now that October's there, huh? Yes, I suppose so. Now... That's not how I see it. I like Rome, I like my work, and I like my freedom. 
Do you honestly tell me you'd go back to the stuffy conventions of the suburbs? Well, there's, there's a good deal to be said for the suburbs. There's a good deal too much said in the suburbs, if you ask me. <laughs> what would the neighbors say if they saw you sitting at a table in, well, Streatham High Road drinking Chianti? <laughs> well, it would be a little unusual, wouldn't it? Exactly, but it isn't here. And the girls, my dear fellow. Oh, the girls. <laughs> How many flashing-eyed charmers would you count on a tour around Tooting Beck Common? Oh, oh. Oh, Quite a number, surely. <laughs> oh, no, you wouldn't. But in Rome. Ah. Now, I must say Italian women appeal to me. That one in Ricci's bar, huh? The beautiful Lucia with the luscious curves. Oh, I, la I don't think I've more. spoken to an Italian girl since I came here, except the servants, of course. Well, why not make the best of both worlds, as I do? Don't you believe when they say you can't have your cake and eat it? You can, you know. You can. Yeah, but, but, but I'm not much good at philandering. Besides, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. And you're pretty lucky, you know, Kennedy. I mean, private income and all that. Look, look at this flat. A real appartamento discreto. Hey, it's nice, isn't it? I doubt if there's a better in the city. One could say that you had everything. Reputation, money, uh, g good looks. I'm afraid I envy you sometimes. Well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> well, really, I'm, I'm not complaining either, though. You'd laugh if you knew how many lira I spent per month on my camera per una persona. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I oh. say, don't, don't think I ought to have any more. Go on, man. Oh. You're only young one. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, oh thanks. That'll do. I say, Kennedy, eh? there's something I rather want to mention to you. All right, Ed. I had lunch today with Gregory. Oh, that ass. Well, he said something about you that I took pretty strong exception to. In fact, I got very angry with him. Oh, I wish I'd been there to see you, angry. Oh, no, you'd be surprised. I... Well, go on. <laughs> I know Gregory doesn't like me. Well, what did he say? Not that I give a damn. Oh, oh perhaps I'd better shut up. <laughs> it's the wine. <laughs> well, he... We began to talk about that pretty English art student who didn't come back to Rome after the vacation. Which art student? Mary Sutherland. Oh, no, that, that, that's not her name. Uh, uh, oh, Sanderson, isn't it? What did Gregory say? He told me to ask you where she was. Then he went on to tell her, well, an unpleasant story about you. I must say I got damned annoyed with him, and I told him I didn't believe a word of it. That's very loyal of you, but I still don't know what he said. I'd be like to... Well, he said that you took Miss Sanderson for a, a holiday and then abandoned her. Said she went back to England broken-hearted because you refused to carry out your promise to marry her. He said there was a dear scandal being talked He got it all wrong. Well, I told him I wouldn't believe it. But you can't afford to let Gregory go about spreading slander like that. You ought to do something about it. Shut him up or, or prosecute well, him. Well, why should I trouble to anger his thought? Oh, it's none of my business, of course I... Merely thought that if you didn't contradict such lies, people will assume that they're true. Now, why should I care? <laughs> if Mary and I had a burnt-out love affair and parted by mutual consent, that's our business, isn't it? Of course. Love, my dear fellow, is a big word. It covers a great many shades of uh, feeling and emotion. Mary's a sweet and charming girl would be discovered it was simply a passing affair. Well, we, we, we did have a wonderful time together at Bellagio and Lake Como. That was a lovely place. Especially in the spring. Mm. I'm so glad we came here, aren't you? Yes, Mary. Don't you think this is the most beautiful place in the whole world? Yes, it's pretty good, I must say. <laughs> pretty good. That's a nice piece of understatement. Just go around in a circle, darling, so that I can see Bellagio, then Catanapia, then Verena, without even having to stir off my car. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Lovely. It should be quite heartbroken when we have to leave tomorrow. No, that's not quite true. Even perfection has to come to an end, eh? Oh, yes, I agree. In a way, darling, I'm anxious that this perfection should come to an end. Are you? Yes. What you said to me when we first fell in love is quite true. You remember you called me a Puritan? So I did. You were quite right. That's what I am at heart, a conventionally-minded Puritan. 
I've been happy here in a kind of way, but I shan't be really easy in my mind till we reach London and get married. Uh, uh, um, uh, look, Mary, I, I want to talk to you about this. Oh, I know what you're going to say. A few perfunctory words spoken over our heads by the parson can't possibly change him. I know that, so. But I still want to have the words spoken over him. Uh, darling, certain um, complications have cropped up. Complications? Yes, I... I can't possibly go to London with you, I'm afraid. I, not at present, anyhow. But that was the arrangement, Teddy. Mother and father expect us on Wednesday. Yes, yes, I know, I know. But I, I shall have to ask you to go on alone tomorrow from Milan while I go back to Rome. Well, of course, I'll join you later. But I don't want to turn up without you. I'll wait till you can come. What happened? That letter I had on Friday, I... Well, I, I didn't want to spoil our holiday by telling you, but it was from Professor Voss of Berlin. He's coming especially to see me in Rome next week. But you can put him off for a few weeks. Not a man of boss's standing. It was seriously damaged my career not to meet him. Your career? It doesn't occur to you that you're damaging mine? Teddy, you can't possibly mean this. But they're getting ready at home. Yes, I said I'd carry out my promise later. Don't say that as though you had the slightest intention of doing it. I couldn't believe you'd treat me in this way. I can't believe it yet. Teddy, what do you mean? Now, don't start to get excited and make a scene. I'm only asking you to wait a little, and then I'll come to London and... Teddy, are you backing up? Mary, I wish you'd try to be sensible and listen to me then carefully. Then the whispers in Rome were true. Hmm? I see now that Richard Gregory was trying to warn you. What are you talking about? And I didn't have the slightest suspicion of you. I thought you were in love with me. Well, of course I was. Was? Well, I think you must see for yourself that we aren't quite as keen on each other as we thought. How easy you must have found it. It never occurred to me to believe that you could say all those lovely things and not mean a word of them. Well, we were attracted to each other at first. You asked me to marry you and said you'd come home with me and meet my parents and have the wedding in London. Look, Mary, we might as well face it. Then you had a brilliant idea. On our way home, you said, why not let's have a week at the most wonderful and beautiful place in the world, the Lazio. Well, you were perfectly agreeable. Perfectly agreeable. Is that all you can say? I really don't see the need for all this drama. Now, we've had our holiday and we're not going to be married. Another conquest for Mr. Kennedy. I've already said I'll come as soon as I can get away. My work is very important. That's what I, I thought of my life and my future. Rather important to me. But they don't seem to mean anything to you. Well, of course they do. Will you come back to Rome in September? I shall never come back to Rome. Never. But I hope I shall never see you again. Oh, say, look here, Mary. Put me ashore, please. I think you're behaving in the most extraordinary way. Put me ashore. What are you going to say about the coma? My dear Benchley, when you know a little more about the world, you'll realize that a man doesn't discuss this sort of thing. Oh, I see. I'd say no more about it. Now then, what about opening your case and seeing those specimens of yours, eh? Oh, yes, certainly. Hmm, I say. What are these? Oh, tiles. Mm, I thought they'd interest you. But where did you get them? In a place I found. Forgive me, but I'd prefer not to be more explicit at this moment. And what's this? Bottle? That's what I'd say. But it's... It's cruder than anything I've ever seen. Oh, my view, exactly. And the... The incisions on these inscriptions. I've never seen characters like them before. Surely they're very early and primitive. My dear chap, it's the most exciting place. Crude, primitive, yes. Those are the words. I don't believe that any eyes except mine have seen this place for, oh, for many centuries. Is it true, then, that you've discovered a new catacomb? Yes. Are you sure that it isn't in Bosio's standard work? Positive. Well, well, this is going to put you on the map, eventually. Perhaps. I, I don't know. That's not the aspect of the thing that interests me at the moment. But how did you come to light on it? Damn it, man, I thought that every catacomb in Rome had been catalogued a hundred years ago. Is it just an odd, undiscovered gallery well, in no, one of these... It's a complete new catacomb. It's quite... Oh, it's, it's quite enormous in extent and incredibly complicated. I've known of its existence now for quite some months. 
I stumbled on the clue by accident when I was in the university library. Yes, go on. Well, there are treasures down there that no one but myself has ever seen. Marvelous amphorae, mostly perfect. There are some tremendously interesting murals that I, I haven't had time to inspect properly yet, and a, a perfectly wonderful chapel somewhere near the center of the whole warren. It's hopeless to try to describe the place. It must be seen to be credited. All right, let me see it. Oh, I... No, I, I, I'm sorry, Kennedy, but I... I can't quite bring myself to let anybody in on this one. Not quite yet. Then why did you mention it at all? Oh, that's silly of me. I know I expect this excellent spumante of yours is responsible. But damn it all, old boy, you can surely trust me. I'd be the last man on earth to blab about it to anyone. Well, well, well you... you know my ideas. Say nothing to anyone until you're sure of your conclusions. But from what I gather, it would take one man years to explore and catalogue the place. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, that's right, years. In fact, it, it, it couldn't be done by one man, never. There's miles of it. Miles. Well, where about it? Near the great aqueduct. <laughs> Sounds like a discovery of the first importance. These inscriptions alone will make a sensation. Basically, you're a lucky devil. Well, not exactly lucky. I, I've worked on the thing rather hard for some time. I must tell you how I lighted on the entrance. It's quite a detective story. Mm -hmm. Well, well, tell me. No, it, it'll take too long. Not, not tonight. Oh, it's too bad, rousing my curiosity like this. I, if I'd been lucky enough to be the discoverer, I'd have taken you into my confidence. You really? Of course. I don't want you to think I distrust you. Well, well, then, just let me take one look at you. Oh, really, Kennedy, you're awfully persuasive. Look, right? come on, come on. I, I, I tell you what. I'll let you blindfold me as soon as we get near the place. Would you? Oh, certainly. And you can do the same after we leave. Now, is that fair enough? Well, I don't know. I... Well, perhaps I wouldn't mind showing you the catacomb under those conditions. No, it sounds childish. Good, 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 good. Fine. Well, what, what, what are we waiting for? Let's go. You mean tonight? Well, of course, why not? Oh, oh, but I, I haven't come prepared. What do you need? Oh, no, nothing really except a good torch. Look in that drawer over there. Oh. I got a flashlight there that throws a terrific beam. Oh, yes. Oh, the very thing for the job. Well, you don't seem to have an excuse left. <laughs> no, I don't, do I? <laughs> Though I must say, I hadn't intended to. Oh, well, all right, then. Actually, I'm quite keen myself. I haven't been down for a couple of days. How do we go, Jackson? <laughs> no, I think not. If you don't mind, I'd rather walk. I've been inside all day in a little fresh air. Oh, I'm fine. Walk suits me. Let's move there. Oh, it seems an awful time of night to go, but... Oh, well, all right. I take this damn handkerchief off now? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Well, well, well where on are we? It's an abandoned cow shed. <laughs> I rented it from the owner, and I keep the place padlocked, as you see. And the entrance to the catacomb? Is it inside here? Mm, under the straw, here. If you'll hold the torch. All right, thanks. There. So this is the entrance. Yeah, there are 20 steps down, but wait a minute first. I've got to put my harness on. Oh. So that's what all this roller towel <laughs> arrangement with all the stout <laughs> string on it is, isn't it? Well, you see, as the catacomb is still largely unexplored, and this is a perfect rabbit water, and I, I take this precaution. Uh-huh, you tie the string on my waist, you see, like this. Yes. And no matter where I wanted to, I could be sure of getting back. <laughs> that's ingenious. Well, I had some pretty narrow escapes at first until I got some hang of the layout. Mm. There's an incredible number of passages which divide and subdivide in a, in a most bewildering way. How do you find your way at all if it's so complicated? Oh, well, there's a certain system to it, of course. And I, I've made a few marks of my own here and there to guide me. Yeah. I'm pretty expert in getting around nowadays, but if a stranger blundered down here, I wouldn't give a button for his chances. Oh, well, I'm ready. Now, give me the torch, will you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go down. Uh, wait till I get to the bottom, and I'll try and talk up. Okay. Right, right over, come on. Take it carefully. Don't worry. I am. Huh. 
Yes, I... I see what you mean. <laughs> well, if this is the entrance chamber, well, there are at least a dozen passages radiating from here for a start. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, where do we go? Oh, this way. Now, don't let's loiter to look at James meantime, because the real marvels are in the central chapel, and it's quite some distance away. Oh, what a place. Cracked brown walls and rows and rows of tombs. Here, here, where, where, where? Let's look at this. You see this inscription here? Pax, uh, what is it? Pax Tinkum. Ah, yes. And uh, here's another one. Pax TV. This is certainly a very early, early place. Oh, I think it may prove to be the earliest of them all. But let's push on. There are far more wonderful things to be seen. Ah, and you know your way around here beats me. The passage is everywhere. The place is an absolute labyrinth. It, it gets more confusing further on. Yeah. Now, round this way. Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute. What's this on top of this tomb? A bracelet? Oh, yes. Oh, but I can show you mirrors and, and, and combs and armlets and, and, and earrings and buckles and brooches and all the usual domestic paraphernalia left by relatives near the tombs of their friends. Oh, and, of course, the usual toys and dice and money jars and some with coins in them. But this is marvelous. Oh, I wish we could stop no, a moment. No, already. no, not this visit. Uh, now, 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 wait a moment. Um, now with it. Yes, we turn, we turn left here. <laughs> it's funny, but this little bit always baffles me for a moment. Oh, this discovery will absolutely make your name. Man. Yes, perhaps. Now, come on. Oh, wait a Is this a wall painting? Yes. Oh, but it's nothing compared with what I show you. Now, oh, keep pressing on, Kennedy, please. You know, all this is small stuff so far. There's rather a fine tomb over there. Yeah, we'll have a closer look on the way back. Yes. This is far more wonderful than San Oh, undoubtedly. Uh, to the right, yeah? Huh? Uh, don't loiter. Please, Kennedy. Yes, I've well, done it all, man. It's so tempting. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, I'll lose you. <laughs> hey, wait. Right. Oh, that's... This is utterly awesome. bewildering. Now... Down this little slope now. Now, now steady. Right. Right? Yes, yeah, over here. Okay. Well, I hope the battery in your torch is a good one. Yes, it's new, thank goodness. <laughs> We've been in the spot of it, we're not. Oh, uh, there's always the string. <laughs> well, how far are we going? Seems to have come quite a long way already. Well, I've never measured the distance, but uh, it's a goodish way before you reach the centre. Mm. I've never yet discovered the limits of the place. Now, don't talk to me for a minute. This is the most difficult place of all. Yes, yes, this way. It's not so far now. Well, this beats me. I've never seen such a network of intersecting passages. I can't, really, I can't think how you know your way, but... Oh, I have practically lived down here for the last three months. Uh, now, in a minute, we come to the place I've been talking about. Uh, it's a large, circular hall with... A great square pedestal of porous rock topped by a slab of marble. Here we are. Look. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Why, that's a Christian art. That's what I think. It might easily be the first one of its kind of existence. I hope it may be. So, shine, shine your, your torch on, on the yeah. end of the marble lobby. There? Yes. Yeah. Right. Look. Here is the little consecration cross cut in the corner. Ah, Finch, yes. this second yes. hall was used as a church. It may be one of the very first to exist. Precisely. Now, now look at some of the bodies buried in the niches of the wall. Huh? Go, go on, look at them. They, they'll surprise you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is tremendous. Why, these must be some of the early clubs and bishops of the church. Yes. Here's one of the mice, sir. Another one. Another one of the clubs here. Oh, this is the most interesting thing I have ever come across. It's unique, I think. When we get this place explored and mapped out, it will cause a sensation. 
The very earliest Christians must have worshipped here when their religion was still prescribed. Yeah. That's why they made the labyrinth so unusually complicated, of course. Mm. As a rap- yes, I'd say there, there are about a, a thousand possible wrong turnings between this wall and the entrance. What? That's a sobering thought. <laughs> you know, you've no idea what real darkness is like until you get down here. I tried it once as an experiment and it scared me stiff. <laughs> Look, I, I'll just switch off the light for a moment and let you see. <sighs> It's not just an ordinary darkness, is it? It, it seems to press on you. It almost mothers you. That'll do, Benjamin. Switch on again. You, you sound quite funny. Switch on the light, man. No, wait a minute first. Do you notice how, when the light's off, you lose all idea of where sounds are coming from? Yes. Yes, I do. Your, your voice seems to be coming from... Oh, Every side of me. Switch on the light, man. No. No, I don't think I will. I think I, I need you in the dark to find your own way back. What? Good God, man, have you gone mad? Not at all. I'm not a devil you're playing yet. This is not a damn nonsense. Where are you? Where are you? Don't hurry, Kennedy. You've all the time in the world. And when you sit down occasionally for a rest, just ask yourself whether you treated Mary Sanderson fairly. Mary Sanderson? What is this? What are you saying? Where are you, man? You seem to be getting further away. Put on the light! I know a deal more about Mary's ruined life than you think. I was in love with her. And just on the point of overcoming my shyness and asking her to marry me when you took her away on that little holiday to the Togo. For the God's sake, man, you... You slipped out of that hole pretty easily, didn't you, Kennedy? Now see if you can get out of this one. Oh, oh no. The Bentley! He can't. He <laughs> Bentley! God damn it, my God. Bentley! Bentley! <laughs> Bentley! In The New Catechism by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, adapted for radio by R.J.V. Seller, Kennedy was played by Howard Marion Crawford, Benchley by Brian Wilde, and Mary by Pauline Yates. The producer was R.D. Smith.